graphics, but he, he may have been earlier than that. I'm just not sure. I'm still digging because I want to actually see, I want to actually show that letter of recommendation. So you can see something that's worthwhile in this whole thing. Somewhere in here. For Christ's sake, where is it? I should have pulled it out before I did this one. I probably should just move on, and I will. I'm not going to keep people watching me shuffle papers all for hours. Because there are a lot of papers involved with this. Okay, so he was appointed the under-librarian of the British Museum by 1756. And I'm sure that because he was a member of the Royal Society, and I guess he had gained some respect there by that time, they, since the Royal Society was pretty much creating the British Museum at the time and running it, uh, brought him over there to be the under-librarian and then eventually became the principal librarian. Okay. So now we have a gap from 1755 to 1767, August 25th, by the way, when uh, he married uh, Lady Savile, who was born Mary Pratt, um, on August 25th at St. George, George's Bloomberry, which is actually across the street from the British Museum today. I don't know how close it was back then, but I imagine it was pretty close. Now, that marriage date is often, as I mentioned earlier, is often misidentified <coughs> as being in 1772. And that year is first mentioned in uh, the 1812 edition of the Dictionary of National Biography. That's about 13 years after he died. <coughs> so where they got that information from for the year 1772, I don't know. But usually, when I look through records, and I don't see an exact date. Um, not necessarily the day, but at least the month. I question those dates anywhere in genealogy or anything like that. Um, experience has taught me that. Usually these uh, solid dates, unless they come off a tombstone, are guesses. Most time a tombstone is actually going to have a date. You can mathematically derive, I live this, you know, this many days, et cetera, et cetera. Now, how do I know the 1772 is wrong? And that, that's still cited in the Oxford Dictionary of National Biography to this day, as, as the, the year he married Lady Savile. Well, I know it's wrong because if I, you know, Google Books is a great resource, and I was able to, to see a few snippets about Dr. Charles Morton added to the overall picture from a book called The Records of the Lumleys of Lumley Castle. And on page 207, it clearly indicates that Lady Savile uh, married Captain Boss in, in May of 1744. And then when I look at the marriage record at St. George's Bloomsbury, uh, Charles Morton is in fact marrying a Mary Wallace on August 25th, 1767. So, um, yeah, and again, that's right across the street from the museum. So I, I'm, that's, that's him and that's her. There's no doubt about it. Um, now, where do I get the Lumleys from Lumley Castle, for God's sake? Well, you know, where does that come from? Well, Mary Pratt, i got a mess in front of me here. Get my papers together. Mary Pratt, and I'm, I'm in, in fact, in my article, I'm going to, I'll just continue on with the article that I'm pretty much reading right now. Okay, in 1767, Lady Savile, or at the time she's Mary Wallace, born Mary Pratt, you know, uh, she was 61 years old, and that was her third marriage. Uh, her first marriage was to George Savile on December 19, 1722, when Charles Morton was a young lad of six years old. Um, now, by her marriage to George Savile, she was the mother of Arabella, Arabella Savile, who married John Thornhay Hewitt. There's some Hewitt, I think it's the Hewitt family, uh, documents in the British archives that have a few snippets of clues about Charles Carr Morton, but not enough to seal the deal. Anyway, Arabella Saville married John Thornay Hewitt on July 23rd, 1744, and the second child was a Barbara Saville who married Richard Lumley. And that's uh, the, the records of, of the Lumleys, or the, you know, the lady who did this historical compil 
compilation of historical records about the Lumleys in the early 1900s, was able to see a few things about um, Dr. Morton in there. One is which is that um, <laughs> Gertrude Saville, the sister of George Saville, didn't approve of Dr. Morton. And um, the last child by that marriage was George Saville, the eighth baronet Saville. Now, there's no mention in um, George Saville or his son's will about their wife, uh, Mary Pratt, at all. Uh, just before George Saville, the seventh baronet, was going to die, he was in the process of divorcing Mary Pratt, um, Lady Saville. Now, just eight months after George Saville died, uh, Mary Pratt, then Lady Saville, married uh, Captain Wallace. And... Uh, February 14th, no, 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 um, in May of 1744, and then, you know, Lady Savile ended up actually dying February 14th, 1791, her, and just as a side note, her mother, Honora Brooks Pratt, was the first cremated individual in England, maybe in the world. Um, she died in 1769, she has a very huge will, she had a lot of siblings that were born, and a lot of cousins that were still living. Um, someone wrote an account of notes and queries about her, thinking that she would leave money to every, the butcher, butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. The truth is, when I actually looked into who her beneficiaries were, most all of them were actually her blood relatives. There were just a lot of them. She was one of many children, and each one of those children had many children, and they had a pretty good survival rate. I have some Brookses in my background, there could be a connection there. Um, the earliest that I can get my Brooks line to go back is not as early as 1769, that is for sure. But um, being, you know, I can't claim any connection to the Brooks of York or of Jack's family here that I'm going over, um, which makes me independent, which is a whole different subject, but I've already mentioned that before. Now, at some point, Dr. Morton ended up living at Twickingham in the former home of Lady Montague. And even at one point, um, there was a small correspondence in Lady Montague's papers of uh, Dr. Morton inviting her over to the museum to, to look around for a little while. And Lady Montague was a very unique individual, and uh, she traveled to, to Turkey, and she brought the smallpox vaccine back with her. Uh, she was very forward-looking, very... Um, intelligent woman of the time, and a very important figure in, in at least uh, in women's history. But I digress. Also, Lady Savile's um, father, John Pratt, was the vice treasurer of Ireland, and she was the only surviving daughter. Her two other uh, siblings died in what's been called Phoenix Park. I haven't found any record of it, but they drowned there, and she was the only living... Um, Inheritant, I think, of uh, of the Pratt monies, but uh, I don't think there was much left by the time she joined. George Savile had a complaint that she had deceived him. Okay, I'm going to stop him. Go to part six. I don't want to lose this.